Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Mother Elizabeth Papazoglakos, and I serve as Associate Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Friday, in the week of the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our lesson is from the book of Judges, the fifth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Then Deborah and Barak, son of Abinoam, sang on that day, saying, When locks are long in Israel, when the people offer themselves willingly, bless the Lord. Hear, O kings, give ear, O princes, to the Lord I will sing. I will make melody to the Lord, the God of Israel. Lord, when you went out from Sire, when you marched from the region of Edom, the earth trembled and the heavens poured, the clouds indeed poured water. The mountains quaked before the Lord, the one of Sinai, before the Lord, the God of Israel. In the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, caravans ceased and travelers kept to the byways. The peasantry prospered in Israel. They grew fat on plunder, because you arose, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. When new gods were chosen, then war was in the gates. Was shield or spear to be seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart goes out to the commanders of Israel, who offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless the Lord. Tell of it. You who ride on white donkeys, you who sit on rich carpets, and you who walk by the way, to the sound of musicians at the watering places, there they repeat the triumphs of the Lord, the triumphs of his peasantry in Israel. Then down to the gates marched the people of the Lord. Awake, awake, Deborah, awake, awake, utter a song, arise, Barak. Lead away your captives, O son of Abinoam. Then down marched the remnant of the noble. The people of the Lord marched down for him against the mighty. From Ephraim they set out into the valley, following you, Benjamin, with your kin. From Mahir marched down the commanders, and from Zebulon those who bear the marshal's staff. The chiefs of Issachar came with Deborah, and Issachar faithful to Barak. Into the valley they rushed out at his heels. Among the clans of Reuben there were great searchings of heart. Why did you tarry among the sheepfolds to hear the piping for the flocks? Among the clans of Reuben there were great searchings of heart. Gilead stayed beyond the Jordan, and Dan, why did he abide with the ships? Asher sat still at the coast of the sea, settling down by his landings. Zebulon is a people that scorn death. Naphtali, too, on the heights of the field. Here ends the lesson. Playing musical instruments like the lyre, harp, shofar, horn, and a timbrel, or tambourine, and singing were integral parts of Israel's culture. Our lesson today is a song sung and possibly composed by Deborah and Barak. This song extols the victory recounted earlier in the chapter, and it accompanies a joyous celebration. The song proclaims God's greatness, and they credit their victory to Him. God is faithful and is always there for us, whether we are celebrating a victory or struggling during challenging times. In either case, when we sing His praise, either literally or in words, it affects our attitude, and we can feel assured that no matter what happens, 
God is with us. God told the Israelites before entering the Promised Land what to do about driving out the Canaanites and not following their false gods. War was inevitable because of the Israelites' disobedience to God. They had chosen to ignore God's admonition. Without God at the center of their national life, pressure from the outside grew greater than pressure from within, and they became vulnerable to foreign entities. If you look at the situation in our nation today, this could be said of us. Our country was founded on Judeo-Christian faith and principles. We need to be asking ourselves, have we moved God out of the center of our national life? I look around at the polarities that exist today along with the resultant hatred, contempt, and vitriol that leads to disdain for our neighbor instead of love for our neighbor as we have been commanded, and consider how far from our Lord we have wandered. We have families, friends, and neighbors who are very divided and who treat each other with contempt. Many are consumed by the desire for power, prestige, and control. These desires paralyze us through stress, anxiety, illness, and fatigue. The solution is to put God at the center of our lives and allow the Holy Spirit to defend and lead us in the fight against those things that otherwise will destroy us. Our call is to live a life worth living with God at the center, loving our neighbors as ourselves. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at His coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for Himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings. Mm -hmm.